Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here, and today I've got another short little unboxing video to share with you guys. I think I know what's in here. The only weird thing is that the box is so gigantic and it, it's fairly heavy. I was only expecting one knife from this person, so perhaps there's a little bit of a surprise in here. Thank you so much to the person who sent this in, which will be apparent in a moment. I will link where you can find information on these because if my memory serves me correctly, these are upcoming and I know a bunch of you are gonna wanna get your hands on them. Thanks to my patrons for supporting me and please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Okay, let's find out what the heck is inside of this giant box. There's probably a more optimal way to do this. Maybe, I don't care. Let's just jump right in here. Oh boy, okay, let me make sure this, oh, he said snacks. <laughs> That's why there's so much in here. Okay, interesting. So this is from, let me make sure, let me make sure. Uh, yeah, um, where's his name here? I believe it is Kane Grambu, um, or Grambo. I, I, I know that I always screw up pronunciation. Thank you so much for the snacks. I appreciate that. Some of these I have never heard of. Now, we also, oh, there is more than one thing though, unless this is more snacks. Is it more snacks? <laughs> what is this? Vegemite, B vitamins. Okay, what? Well, hey, listen, I appreciate that. Very cool. So check out K Grambo on Instagram and Grambo Knives on Facebook. So what do we have here? We do have a knife. This is not a food review. Let's move all this out of the way here real quick. I will make use of these. Thank you very much. So the knife, what's in here? Could it be? Oh, it is. Oh boy, it's the new Russ. Ah, one of the most underrated designs. One of the most underrated and super cool EDC knives, the Russ. Now I have a Russ, but this is the new one. This is the new Russ with the frag scales. Oh, so cool. The reason that I like this knife so much, and I, I have one uh, from the past gen that uh, um, was actually sharpened by him, but this knife combines elements of a lot of different very popular knives, right? Obviously this is its own design, right? A similar blade shape or handle profile is not a copy of anything, but you know, at this, at this uh, day and age, um, everything is inspired by something, right? So we clearly have some Sabenza lines here. We have um, the see-through hardware, which is reminiscent of Strider, of course, especially considering its front and back. Very cool, very nice profile. What I love about this knife is that this is actually a frame lock. You can see here that the lock is not attached to the frame. It is the frame, right? So usually what we see here, for those of you who are still confused, usually what we see is the frame, the entire scale on this side covers the liner lock and the liner lock is a separate piece attached to the frame via screws or fasteners, what are you gonna call them, right? No, this is a frame lock with a separate piece of titanium covering it. Why do they do that? Well, you get, I mean, it's honestly, it's about the same thickness as a, a regular frame lock. Um, but we have here, what we have here is, I maybe would argue a slightly thicker, kind of in between a traditional liner lock and frame lock, and what advantage you get there, I don't know. But there's a cover. So we do not have to screw around trying to find the uh, most optimal position for deploying the knife, right? This is thumb stud only, which by the way, bravo on those thumb studs. That's one of the reasons I love this knife so much. They're, it's done absolutely perfectly. Um, but we don't have to screw around finding the optimal position for our index finger and middle finger, which on an exposed frame lock can, if improperly placed, cause unnecessary pressure on that lock bar and therefore unnecessary pressure uh, of the detent ball on the detent hole. And that makes it uh, hard to deploy. Obviously, most people can get around this, but it's nice to just be able to deploy the thing, right? On top of that, it's wide enough that you can still add a steel lock bar insert. So we have a steel lock bar insert. The entire plate acts as the over travel as well as a guard to keep your 
uh, fingers off it, the pressure off of it. And I think most importantly, you can, much like other liner locks, grip this as hard as you want without pressing that lock bar further into the tang. A lot of people don't consider that an issue, but I do. That increases the wear of the lock bar and decreases the life, right? The longevity of the thing. It also can, can cause um, like a, a, a premature lock rock if you squeeze it really hard during use. Or, and this is a downside to all frame locks, right? If you're using them that hard. Premature lock rock. And it can also cause like weird warpage of the um, surface, right? And, and uh, also excess lock stick. So you're avoiding all this with this design, which is really cool, right? Um, I, I love this knife. I love the profile. I also love the overall size. Now, I wonder if this is about the same. I would get mine out, and I will for the review, because this is not a review, just an unboxing and first impressions. I wonder if this is exactly the same size as the first one. Something tells me, oh, it is. This is a bit smaller. So this guy's gonna come in at seven and a half inches. Whereas the original, if my memory serves me correctly, is actually eight inches. Blade length on this guy is still very good at about 3.3, let's say 3.3, yeah. Cutting edge is about three, a little more than three and an eighth. Because of this large open profile though, you can still get a full grip on this guy. No problem. I'm realizing we should probably zoom up here just because we're, we're so far away. We were zoomed way back to accommodate for the size of the box, but I think it would be a good idea to do um, some size comparisons. So what knives are similar in size? I'm gonna say definitely the Hogue Deca, very, very similar there. Uh, how about like the CJRB Pyrite? That's also very similar in size. What else do we have here? The Demco AD 20.5, absolutely. The Spyderco Para 3 is also very similar. Not exact, but similar. Uh, the Benchmade Bugout, obviously. I mean, if the, if the deck has a similar size, then the, the Bugout. And we're gonna get, it's a copy, it's a copy of the Bugout. <laughs> Uh, the Ontario Rat Model 2, very similar. And do we have another one? I don't know. This isn't, this is a little smaller, but maybe the uh, Civivi Elementum button lock is a good size comparison. Let's check weight on this real quick. Just because I know some people are going to want to know. I think, does he have some internal? Yeah, there is some internal milling. These are very smooth, by the way. Very, very smooth. You can check out. This is the Russ, but it's, I mean, it's just a smaller size, but you can check out the Grambu or Grambo Russ. I, I forget. You know, there's Kambu or Combo, and I can never remember how to pronounce his name. So I'm saying both because it's just hard to remember, right? So the weight on this guy, you're looking at 3.84 ounces of weight for a little more than three and a quarter inches of blade. So not bad at all. Very nice styling, and by the way, it is not textured underneath the pocket clip. Very good. Nice big standoff there. Pretty cool, and it doesn't really require much hardware. This is a very easy knife to, um, you know, disassemble and maintain. I, I, I like this um, Demco, well, and Demco isn't the first one to do it, but I like this idea of actually milling the information into the pivot. I think it looks nice. Um, I've always I've been a fan of that, and I always, also really like the see-through hardware. I don't know why um, that is so appealing to me, but it definitely is. I don't know that there's a whole lot more to talk about here. That's essentially it. Um, these were extremely underrated, and I think they flew under the radar. The original Rust flew under the radar for so many people. Um, that was one of my favorites. I think that was 2022. That was one of my favorites for 2022. I mean, if I were to do like a top 50, which is a lot considering if there are 365 days in a year, um, I upload double that, literally yearly, two uploads a day. So I handle a lot of knives. Um, that, that's an understatement. So even if I would play, I mean, it might've been top 20 or so, but it, that is, this is definitely one of my favorite models um, from 2022. It's just a, a smaller size. So I think that might make a lot of people happy. Very cool. 
Uh, you will get a full comprehensive review of this knife. I will carry and use it and then give you guys my final thoughts, those of you who want to wait for that. Otherwise, you can check out the information in the description if you want to check this knife out. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.